now that the person that was uh, orange is no longer in office, we've seen a big time decline in the viewership of a lot of the mainstream news sources, the people that they tell you that, you know, they, they like to claim that they, they're not, they don't take sides, but of course they do. And CNN is in the news. <laughs> the irony there for reaching an entire week without a million viewers. There's more to be said about this here and, and, it's important, but hold on. Let's read through it real quick. Oh, snaps. Sorry if some of it's cut off. Matter of fact, I can actually fix that. Hold on. There we go. CNN continues to sink to new lows and not only in journalistic, journalistic ethics. According to the Nielsen data, the scandal plagued network has gone an entire week without reaching 1 million viewers from July 28th to August the 3rd. Further solidifying the liberal outlets struggle to carry on without Trump in the White House. Chris Cuomo, CNN star anchor who was swept up in the explosive report uh, from the New York Attorney General Letitia James that outlined damning sexual harassment allegations against his brother. Uh, received a minimal ratings bump on Tuesday night as viewers were curious as to whether or not he would address the controversy. Roughly 100,000 viewers more than he did on Monday. So people were tuning in to see what he was going to say, considering what happened recently with with his brother. And even then, even with that, ex that anticipation, uh, Cuomo ultimately uh, avoided the scandal altogether on his program. And it only got 930,000 viewers. So he couldn't hit the million view mark. Cuomo primetime averaged a measly 872,000 viewers despite being CNN's highest rated show in the past week, coming at a distant third behind Fox News' Hannity uh, in the same time slot with 2.3 million viewers. And MSNBC's Rachel Madcow, um, excuse me, Maddow, show with 1.6 million so even even uh, msnbc's rachel mad cow is doing better than what cnn is, uh, is is doing i don't know if you guys remember and if i'm not mistaken it was on brian whatever the guy that's 35 years old but he looks like he's way older than that um brian skelter or whatever his name is skelter or something like that and it was on his show and it was some guy i can't remember his name we covered it on this channel and they were talking about this very subject. And of course the excuse was like misinformation and, and all of these sorts of things surrounding like COVID that was their excuse, but they were utterly terrified. They were terrified, terrified at the idea of, of, of like people, for example, YouTubers, because they didn't even mention it by name. They were like, not YouTubers by name, or people that were onto YouTube by name. They were saying that those people are averaging more viewers than, let's say, like the morning talk shows or something on, or morning news shows on CNN. And of course, they're looking at it like, oh, people look at these folks getting, it was kind of sound like they were talking about Crowder uh, and those types. Uh, but they were basically suggesting that, look, these guys have a big following and look, they're letting all this misinformation spread and people are watching them instead of us was really the 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 angle that they tried to take. They are absolutely terrified of people that are not connected to them. And we're look, the news industry is I don't want to say it's late. They've been dealing with this problem for a little bit as well. But a lot of different industries that were a lot of stuff were funneled through the rise of these other platforms where people or really just internet, just the world becoming more, more rooted in that it has allowed a lot of people to be able to get their word out and get their messaging out to other people without having to go through the usual channels. It's like that with the music industry, music industry you used to have to go through those channels, the radio, the, the labels and all of that to get your music heard. Now you can just post it on YouTube. You can get it on all digital platforms at a click of a button. Whereas to back then, it wasn't like that. News agencies and people where people get their like political commentary from is the same thing. 
where people don't feel like they have to anymore get that information from these institutions and they're utterly fucking terrified the state's ter- terrified uh, of it all because you know it, it, basically what it, what it what is happening is that people are less likely i'm not going to say unlikely because they're still likely to be sheep but they're less likely to get their information from those controlled people who really just work in and with the state anyway because, well, they can easily access other people's information or other people's shows and other people's videos and all of that. And that suffice. That will be just fine. They don't have to watch CNN. They don't have to even watch the MSNBCs of the world. They don't have to do that. And the CNNs of the world, that's why they were they went through that stint where they were trying to demonize creators that were out of that space you notice they always try to delegitimize alternatives i know you've been paying attention to this because i have entertainers do it too because they see the writing on the wall right gina carano decides that well she was all be fought but you get she said i'm not quitting do it got to deal with the daily wire first thing they did is try to delegitimize that ha 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 doing whatever with the daily wire and i'm not saying that that material is going to be good i don't know what I'm saying is that they they want to delegitimize anything it is that someone else does. Because it doesn't go through their clearance, right? We're not going through their security to have to get the information out there to the people. Entertainers see the writing on the wall. Comic book artists, comic book writers with the big two. These guys see the writing on the wall. So what they're doing right now, and which is what, what they have, CNN did it with YouTubers. They try to delegitimize everything that is people doing maybe something similar or in the same industry it is, but they're doing it better and they're not connected to them. That fucking frustrates these guys, man. They hate that. They hate it. But the writing's on the wall, dude. They see it. I see it. We all see it. We, we all see it. We all see it. We see it. And it only goes down from here unless, which is very likely, unfortunately, where they try to run these uh, more campaigns to try to get those those platforms like you've seen now with the misinformation, disinformation thing. We never saw that before from YouTube. Now, all of a sudden, you can't talk about the virus, can't talk about this certain stuff. They'll try to do that to try to suppress them doing that. But. It's only a matter of time for people move to something else because they can't really control it. They see the writing on the wall, and I love it. You just watched a clip from my podcast, For Cannon's Sake. Catch us live at 12 p.m. throughout the week over at youtube.com slash youngripper59 and follow us over at odyssey.com slash at youngripper59. If you want to watch the entire video cast after the show is over, just be sure to become a member on the YouTube channel. Of course, the full audio portion of the podcast is available for free on all major digital platforms or just visit forcanonsake.com.